All right, we're back at it again, fam. Today we're gonna be working on an Audi Q7. I know it's been a minute since we've done any content on the Audi, and for you Audi fans out there, I do apologize for the wait, but there's a good reason why we haven't shot any content on the Audi, and that's because I have a wheel bearing noise. Uh, and I don't wanna drive it with wheel bearing bad because obviously the wheel could fall off. So I put it on the shelf for a minute, but we're about to start shooting some more content on it now. I need to get this vehicle back up. I do not like having vehicles that don't run. Um, and I've mentioned that before in a video, so I wanna make sure I live to that and get this Audi back on the road here. The bearing noise is coming from the front of the vehicle. I believe it's the left front, but I'm gonna have to try to diagnose what side it is. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's the left front bearing. So I'll probably end up getting it in the air and running it off the ground hopefully the traction control doesn't go all crazy on me running it in the air but i do want to try to get under there and see if i can locate which side is the noisy side so a lot of things to do on the audi want to get it going again so let me go ahead and jump to it now uh, i'll cut back to you guys when i'm taking the hub bearing apart <laughs> As you can see from the time lapse, we got the vehicle in the air, we got some jack stands under there, and we're gonna run it in the air to see if we can figure out where this bearing noise is coming from. So let me jump to that now. Hopefully we don't get any issues from starting and running it in the air. It's been a minute since this thing's ran. So my foot's on the brakes, uh, and then I'm gonna put it in the gear I'm not going to step on the gas, I'm just going to simply let off and see if, uh, let it idle basically to see if I can hear that noise. Oh yeah, I can already hear it. So let me get out here real quick. Yeah, I can hear it. It's definitely this left front. I don't know if you guys can hear that, that grinding noise. Now we go over here lot quieter so guys I think we figured it out it's the left front but I'm gonna stop running it in the air now so let me turn it off all right fam so as you can see the noise is coming from the left front so we're gonna go ahead and move the wheel now uh, pull the brake assembly apart, pull the rotor off, and then take that whole hub assembly out. And once we have it out, we're going to take it over to the press and press the new wheel bearing in it. I should have one on the shelf somewhere there. Uh, so I'll have to dig that up. Um, but I'm pretty sure I have one on the shelf. So I'll get that wheel bearing swapped out here shortly. So let me just jump to it now with getting some tools and getting that wheel off. All right, let me show you guys what we got here. Let me get you off this tripod, uh, what I'm seeing. Um, so just so you know, well, this is a brake caliper, but you could see the bolt there. That's kind of like a, a proprietary, uh, it's not quite an inverted uh, Torx. It looks like a different pattern, but you need to say, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have that. I'm gonna take a look, but uh, I probably don't have that socket. I mean, I'm not even going to bother to do deal with that. So, um, just to show you guys, there's a caliper bracket back here. Hopefully, you guys can see in this lighting. But there's a bolt right here. Um, let me get in here. So there's a bolt back here on this caliper bracket there and there. Down here as well. We're going to go ahead and disconnect it there. I believe that's a looks like a 21 millimeter. So I'm going to put a 21 on it. All right, so we're going to use a 21 millimeter and a half inch drive. I'm just using a long handle ratchet. Uh, and to be honest, I've already broken the bolts free because they were a pain in the ass. 
but we're going to take these 21 millimeters out of the caliper bracket now. Let me grab something to hang it from too. Let me get that first. All right, so I said it before in other videos, but love these little hooks. You get them from the swap meet. So I got them from good guys swap meet, but yeah, these hooks come in handy to hang all kinds of stuff on, especially calipers. I use them all the time. So we'll get these caliper bolts out. So yeah, I just pull the caliper off. Be careful with the brake line there. You don't want to damage it. Uh, and then what I do is I take the hook, hook it through. Let me see if I can turn it for you guys to see. Hook it through the eyelet there for that uh, caliper bolt. And then we're gonna hang it right here from the coil spring, just like that. You see? And that way the pressure of the weight of this um, caliper is not on the brake line so much or any of the other wires for that matter but so we're going to keep going i'm going to get this rotor off next uh, and then so take a look at what it's going to take to get that hub off so this rotor i believe you just have one little set screw here uh, like an alignment screw so i'll take that out looks to be a torx uh, and then i will get this rotor off so let me go ahead and get my torx bit and get that off all right fam so to get this rotor off, we're going to need a T30 Torx bit. I got that here. Let's go ahead and break this free. I'm just going to use my ratchet once again. I got an adapter down to 3 8. Yeah, it's not on that tight. Sometimes these things can be on there pretty tight when they get rusted, but this one's not bad. All right, hopefully this wiggles off. There we go. All right, we'll just set the rotor aside. Now we want to get this wheel bearing out. Hopefully we have an Allen that big. That thing is huge. That's for our CV. Without that, we can't do this job. So that might be a specialty tool I have to cut and go get. Hopefully I have one that size. Let me take a look. All right, fam. I definitely don't have this size Allen. I don't even know what size that is. Looks huge, maybe like three quarter. I don't know, it's big, but I did find some Boltus extractors. Uh, and they just happen to have different size hexes on the back. I mean, so let's see if one of them fits. As you can see, see how they're all hexed. They're like a hex drive on the back side. But they're really just a bolt extractor. So I'm going to see if one of these fits. And some of you guys may be savvy enough to see where I'm trying to go with this. Haha. -ha. We found one that fits. So again, it's just a hex on a bolt extractor set. And it's the bolt extractor set from Irwin. Hopefully it's strong enough to uh, take this bolt out. These things are usually on pretty good. Um, but it fits perfect perfect fit now it is a 3 8 drive on one side but I'm not going to be able to use that because it just it won't go in that direction it's too shallow for that so we're going to put it here I'm going to try to put a socket on the end of it so let me find out what size socket that is all right fam so we got this bowl extractor here uh, it fits right into this CV shaft bolt uh, that we need to take out of the way to get the hub off. Um, also, you could use a socket here on the end of it. Again, this is one I got from Irwin. Uh, it, it's at the Home Depot or like a Lowell's or even your Ace Hardware. They usually have these kind of kits, but I just happen to have one in my toolbox. And it fits perfectly here. Uh, it also fits a 19 millimeter so either 19 or three quarter inch uh i'm gonna put that in here 
and then break this hub bolt free and I'm gonna break this uh, CV shaft bolt free so let's see if we can get some torque on here oh that thing is on so tight all right all right so I went ahead and got a longer breaker bar uh, and so let's just see if I could get it broken with this probably gonna have to stand on it turn the wheel all right I'm gonna put a lot of torque on it see if I can get this to break So I went ahead and gave it a couple hits with a hammer to hopefully loosen it up. I don't have a torch, so otherwise I would just heat it with a torch um, to get it to expand and loosen. But right now, I just hit it with a sledgehammer essentially. Hopefully that loosened it up and we'll go ahead and try to get this broken free. So that seemed to have worked. It's super tight though. And so the left side does go counterclockwise, just in case you're wondering. But yeah, that thing's torqued down really tight. But my hack worked. We got the bowl out again Irwin so if the dealers charge you for the specialty tool maybe go down to the uh, local Home Depot or Ace Hardware and get yourself one of these Irwin bolt extractor sets so in case you guys are wondering uh, let me give you a look at it this is the Irwin bolt grip five-piece expansion set uh, it's like a bolt extractor set we used I believe the 10 millimeter one here yeah so we used the 10 uh, the back side of it's the perfect size uh, to fit this CV shaft bolt right there so again if you guys are looking for it, it's the Irwin bolt grip five-piece expansion set um, I don't know maybe that's the part number there hopefully you guys can see it two four two one zero 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 two I believe that's the part number or maybe it's this one here on top um, three nine four zero zero two part number three nine four zero zero two all right so go ahead and check that out if you need a socket for this uh, CV shaft bolt all right let me get to uh, taking apart the back here um, I got to remove the four bolts here on this hub to get the bearing out. So I'll pull the whole hub assembly apart. <laughs>
All right, fam, so I got the hammer of Thor here, and we're gonna see if we could get this uh, hub off by lightly tapping. And obviously that is not working. All right, fam. So I tried to tap it off with the hammer, that didn't work. I didn't want to damage this flange because uh, that's where your wheel mounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a puller. So I have this adapter here and I'm gonna use the wheel lugs from the wheels in order to attach it. And then I'm gonna use a slide hammer to hopefully get this hub off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, make sure you got a good bite on it. I'm gonna put our slide hammer on here. So we're gonna screw it deep in there, all the way through, catch every thread. All right, I think that's good. And we're just going to slide hammer it out, hopefully it comes off. Oh wow, it's just coming right out, out of the bearing, it's coming apart. The whole bearing's coming apart. Hopefully I'm not screwed here, but uh, the whole bearing's coming apart. Alright, so there it is as it leaks all over my driveway. Now we have to try to figure out how to get the hub out. And that's gonna be a pain in the ass, I think. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take this whole spindle out now that I'm looking at it. So let me clean up this mess, and I'm just gonna plan on taking the whole spindle out and pressing it off. Because I think that's the only way it's gonna come out. All right, as always, things take longer than you want them to and you always run into issues along the way. So it looks like I'm gonna have to take the whole spindle out. In order to do that, I'm gonna start with taking the backing plate off. Um, really wasn't anticipating this, but I'll go ahead and take that off and then disconnect the upper and lower ball joints and the ABS sensor here. And then take the whole spindle out and take it over to the press and press it out of the spindle and then press the new one in. So let me get to that. All right, so we're going to start here. Taking the back and forth. Now I'm going to have to remove this jack here under this lower ball joint. Um, because I'm going to be taking it all apart. So I'll get the jack out of the way. Again, we're using a jack just to create clearance between our CV shaft boot and the back here uh, to get these two top bolts out. Uh, now I don't need to do that because those bolts are removed. So I'm going to move the jack out of the way. All right. So in retrospect, what I'm seeing is that I didn't have to take these four bolts out right away. Uh, I could have done it once I get the spindle out and I'll be able to see it a lot better. Um, I didn't know I was going to have to take the spindle off though. So I went ahead and thought I could take those four bolts out and uh, hammer this out, but it didn't come out. Um, so the spindle has to come off either way. I'm pretty sure that is the way I should have done it from the beginning. Um, removed it and then take the uh, bolts holding this hub uh, out after it was on the bench. So I'm going to do that now. So we got to take off this ABS sensor. Um, let me show you guys that real quick. So what you want to do is take a pocket screwdriver and back here, uh, hopefully you guys can see it. You want to pry out on this clip. Uh, hopefully you guys can see it there, but you want to take it completely out. So it's a little clip here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, and then you want to go ahead and disconnect this connector here. You want to push in the release now and pull this connector off. It's going to be a little hard. 
There we go. So, yeah, you want to just disconnect that ABS sensor. All right, so let me put you guys back over here and uh, disconnect the rest of this. So all of this stuff will have to come off to get this spindle off. You want to be careful not to damage your ABS sensor there when you're removing the cabling too. Alright, so we're going to hang that off to the side. Yeah, it looks like there's a bolt back here for the brake caliper or the brake hose. All right, so the lower ball joint and upper ball joints are gonna be 16 millimeter, so I got that there. Um, we wanna break those free. I'm gonna use a socket on one side, a ratchet on the other. I'm gonna start here at the bottom. Actually, the bottom only has a bolt, so there's no nut on the back side. It's, it's really loose. So, not too hard to get out on that one. Yeah, there's absolutely no tension here on this bolt. Yeah, it came right out. No issue. So it has two ball joints at the bottom. So there's one here also. Alright, so that one's a 21 millimeter. It's a nut at the bottom of this ball joint. Yeah, those of you guys have wrenched before would probably be surprised too to find out there's no castle nut or cotter pin on the bottom of that ball joint. Very strange. So hopefully that lower control arm comes out easy enough. Now let's start getting more stuff off here. Now there are 21 millimeter here on this tie rod end. We're going to be careful not to break this wheel sensor here for the ABS. Again, no castle nut holding this on whatsoever. So no cotter pin, no safety. Very strange. But again, German vehicle. Alright. Alright, and then we got the two on the top here. Well actually it looks like one through bolt maybe serving both ball joints and that should be about it we'll have to probably hammer some stuff out like the tie rod in and these lower ball and upper ball joints but I think I'll get that tie rod off first so I'm gonna try not to hit my wheel sensor but I'm gonna put this nut back on and uh, hammer down on it let me get a punch though because I don't want to get too close to that wheel sensor all right, so I'm gonna use a drift punch here because uh, I wanna get away from this wheel sensor with my hammer. I don't wanna hammer down on top of this nut that close to my wheel sensor. So I'll use a drift punch. In this case, some of you guys in the know would recognize that as a kingpin. So this was a kingpin from, I don't know, some kind of top kick or bobtail or something back in the day, I don't know. But we collect these things because we use them as punches. So I'm just going to use the hammer of Thor here to force it down. And we'll go ahead and take that nut back off. But the reason we put that nut on there is, is so we're hammering against the head of that nut instead of hammering on our threads here. That way we don't ruin the threads on our tie rod end uh, because the tie rod end we're going to reuse. So, all right. Still dripping out grease here all over my driveway so I'm going to do the same thing and try to hammer up on this lower ball joint by putting this nut back on all right and then I'm going to hammer up I don't have much room here there we go 
All right, so that went. It's like there's a little tension on it. Kind of popped up there. All right, so we'll take our nut back off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the top off and I'll probably use a hanger on this one as well because I still don't have that brake hose disconnected. Let me grab another hanger. All right, so again, we're using these nifty little hangers here we get from the swap meet. I'm gonna just use it to hang this spindle once I get it free from these ball joints uh, while I work on taking the brake line off the back of the spindle. So let me go ahead and grab my 16 millimeter again, wrench and ratchet, and I'm going to loosen the bolt for the upper ball joints. Looks like one through bolt that goes through both ball joints. All right, I'm going to use the hammer a little bit here with that nut on there to tap my nut back, my bolt back I should say. There we go. All right. Uh, so it's a pinch here. So I'm going to try to use my pry bar in between to spread it open. Actually, I'm going to put this in there a little bit. Try to wedge it apart. There we go. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. So I'm going to take my hook and hook it in one of the holes for the ball joint uh, and then hook it on again to the spring. I'm going to get this brake hose disconnected. I think I'm going to unhook it from the top here. And I'll hook this brake hose real quick. if I could get this lower part of the spindle spread out a little more so I could uh, get that ball joint all the way out all right so I'm just going to use a bigger pry bar here let me bring you guys in again so you can see what I'm doing but I'm gonna put it in that notch there and I'm gonna hammer it in uh, so it spreads apart and hopefully falls off of that ball joint the lower ball joint guys back over here all right I do want to have somehow that this thing isn't gonna fall and damage anything so I do want to hook it somewhere so I want to hook it actually to the top uh, control arm so let me hook that on the control arm real quick all right as you see there, I just hooked it on the upper control arm, one of them here, with that hook. So that way it doesn't fall down, hopefully when it comes off, anyways. So that's the last thing that seems to be holding it. So let me go ahead and see if I can hammer it on that. There we go. As you can see, I went ahead and hammered it in there. Uh, and then uh, it spread apart enough to come off of the lower ball joint see all right so we'll get our pry bar out of the way now and we'll take it off the hook up here and hope the whole thing should just come right out all right so there it is it's out of the vehicle uh, there's our mess there that we made uh, but let me go ahead and get this thing cleaned up and on the press. So I'll cut back to you guys when it's on the press. But well, we're gonna go back here to the bone yard and uh, figure out how to set it up on this press. Not sure how it's gonna work out, but let me go ahead and uh, 
get some I'm gonna have to get some cones or something here to mock this up so we could press it out all right all right so we're back here in the bone yard you can see all the engines back here this is the LS for the um, Skylark so that's gonna be going in soon and that's the original uh, small block Chevy out of the Camaro so that one is parked for who knows how long till we get a project for it all right so let me set this up somehow all right not really sure what I'm gonna need here so I'm grabbing all kinds of stuff I got these big sockets um, I may need those to press this down on so I'll have a set surface to ride on I don't know um, really not sure how this is gonna work out so this one looks like it'll fit right there on that bearing race on the inside and that should force it out but I need to put something here for it to sit on on this side so I think I'm gonna use these flat plates I'm gonna stand these up All right. I'm gonna lower it down this And then I'm gonna stand these up. Hopefully they'll stand up. Not really flat on the side. So maybe if we're lucky, we can find more stability this way. That definitely looks better uh, but now we got this huge gap here we got to fill so let's see if we could get a well let's get lined up a little better first all right I think there's pretty good uh, so now let's get something to fill that gap let's check out one of these sockets all right so we got it set up here on these blocks. Um, it doesn't look the most stable, but we're gonna go ahead and try this way. Uh, we got a bit of a gap here, so we'll go ahead and start jacking it down. But essentially, we're gonna force this bearing out. So we're just using a 12 ton press here. I'm going to try to press it out as evenly as possible, uh, but I can't really get lined up too well, so it's going to be a little crooked, but it should still come out. I'm just going to slowly push down on it here. I can feel it loosening up. It should pop, pop right out the bottom, hopefully. going keep our hands and eyes away from it I don't see any clips or anything else holding it in the bolts are out so I'm wondering if I should take that uh, wheel sensor out yeah I'm gonna take that wheel sensor out yeah Uh, wheel sensor should be fine. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it in. I'm probably gonna regret it. But. So we heard it pop. So we're gonna keep going down. There it goes again. And as you can see, it's starting to come out at the bottom. Of course, I'm crooked because I'm really not on there straight.
And there we go. As you can see, that wheel sensor does protrude quite a ways in there. So hopefully we didn't damage it. Looks speed okay though. Uh, but you may want to consider taking that wheel sensor out. So there's that hub bearing. Let's go ahead and see if we can't locate the new one somewhere on the shelf over there. All right, let me get in here, find this part. Of course, Camaro's in the way. I don't feel like moving it. So, let's see if we get lucky and it's somewhere close. I don't even remember what the package looks like. Maybe, oh, here it is, hub assembly, right there. Staring me right in the face. All right, shows you I didn't know what the box looked like. Looking right at it. All right, I got this probably from O'Reilly's. I know it's been a while. It is definitely different than I anticipated. So this is this part here. Okay, that looks right. But that race is a lot smaller. So that's not the right one, damn it. This inner race is a lot different size uh, than this hub here. Completely different. So, yeah, that sucks. Hopefully I can return it. It's been so long since I had it. I don't know if they'll let me return it. But I buy a lot of stuff from them, so hopefully they'll let me return it. And then I got the receipt right there. So see how old it is yeah it's like eight months I've had this thing all right so that sucks I got the wrong part so I'll cut back to you guys after I get the right part obviously it's gonna be a different day probably week a different month I don't know all right but I'll cut back to you guys in just a minute one week later all right fam so we have our new bearing here we have our hub and we have our spindle. We got to put all this back together. Except there's one problem. The inner race for this bearing is still on the hub. So as you can see there, there's the inner race. And we got to get that off this hub. Now that's pressed on. So that's going to be an issue. I have a couple tricks to get that off. Now you could choose to replace the hub itself. I wanted to go with all dealer parts. Um, in some cases you could find the whole hub assembly bearing all together. Uh, I didn't want to go that direction just because it was about another week delay to have it shipped in and it would be off of Amazon or some other outfitter that um, wasn't a dealer part. So I went ahead and got the dealer part since it was in stock and I could get it right away. But that leaves me with having to get this race off of this hub because I have to reuse the old hub. Uh, it is a pressed on race so it's going to be quite hard to get off. In some cases, you could get behind it with an air hammer and kind of chisel it out. Um, you could also heat it with a torch, expand it, and then um, pop it off again with an air hammer, getting behind it and chiseling it off. The heat expands it, so that makes it a little easier. Uh, I can't find my torch, so uh, that's not going to be an option today. But what I'm going to do is uh, simply take an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and I am going to cut this off. So I'm gonna cut it really carefully without nicking this inner surface here. I don't wanna nick this machine surface uh, because that is where our bearing is gonna be pressed. Uh, but I'm gonna cut it at an angle here, get as deep as a cut as possible without damaging any of the surfaces below. Uh, I'll do two relief cuts, one on each side, 
and now I'll take my air hammer and what I'm going to do is try to chisel it at an angle around until it starts working itself off and in some cases it may even crack uh, the bearing race uh, as you're air hammering it which is best case scenario because then it'll come right off so that's what we're going to do we're going to take our cutoff wheel and make some notches in here uh, some relief cuts and hopefully either it will crack all the way open and come off um, or we'll be able to air hammer it around and out so I'm going to go ahead and get that done now so I'm going to put on some music you guys just sit back and put some relief cuts in there I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to nick the surface of this bearing like I said earlier so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an air hammer I'm using a chisel bit uh, but it's kind of a concave chisel bit but I, I couldn't find my flat one it doesn't have to be concave uh, but I'm gonna essentially try to hammer this till it starts moving uh, once it twist a little I'm gonna come behind it here and try to force it up and out so I'm waiting for my air compressor to to get some air but let's see if we have enough to get this started all right so this will be a little hard if you don't have pneumatic tools All right, so I'm just going to get in that groove there that I made and without trying to hit this surface. I don't want to nick that surface, so I'm going to try my best not to. Uh, I'm going to try to get it to walk a little off. Let's see if I can't just get it. Get it behind there.
So you see how I'm making a little space in between there? And now I'm just going to walk it on out. Again, you don't want it. You don't want to hit the surface underneath. So you want to go to the other side and just keep walking it back and forth. All right, see, we got it off there. You see how it went ahead and just cracked where we made that relief cut? Hopefully you guys can see that there. Uh, but we created a crack with our air hammer uh, where it was weak there on that relief cut because uh, this is a hardened surface. Once you start putting some pressure on it, it's gonna you typically crack. Uh, but that allowed it to come on off. So that's how you get that inner bearing race out. Now we have our hub uh, fairly unscathed. I don't have any nicks in the surface here. That's important. This is an important surface where the bearing rides. Um, I think I just barely nicked it right there, I think, with my blade. But superficial, no damage done. So we're going to go ahead and put this back together with this bearing here. We're going to press it all back together. Uh, and put it back in our spindle. So we want to make sure when we press it together, we have it in the right position. We don't want to press it on backwards. So this surface here, you can see it's machined. That surface is going to mount right here on your spindle. So you want to make sure that this surface is the one that's facing away from your hub. So the hub's going to press in this direction here, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and bolt it right onto our spindle and put the whole thing back together. So, in order to press it on, all we're gonna do is lay it down here on the press. Let me move this, get my setup rigged up right here. And we're gonna put the hub down first. We're gonna make sure our mounting surface for the spindle, which is this machine surface, is facing up away from the hub. Uh, we're going to put it on like that, and we're going to find a socket or something that fits on this bearing race. Make sure you don't put it on this black seal here, because you'll damage the seal. And make sure you don't put it on the actual uh, bearing housing, because if you push on the bearing housing, you'll just force the bearing race out, and it, your bearing will fall apart. So you want to make sure you're on this inner race here of the bearing. That's where the pressure needs to be in order to force it on the hub. So I got a series of sockets here. Now I do a lot of one ton axles. Well, not anymore, but I used to do a lot of repairs on one ton axles. So I have these big axle nut sockets uh, for the rear uh, and in some cases for the front end and four wheel drive axle assemblies. So they're typically a good size for this sort of application. So I'm gonna pick one of these. As you can see, I've done it before using my sockets. Um, sometimes you damage the socket, but uh, they seem to fit perfect. See, like this one here is just about perfect. I'm going to see if I can find one that fits a little better. All right. 
that's the winner right there. See how it's a perfect surface to mount on that race? Uh, again, we're pushing on the inner race here. And we're going to force this whole bearing assembly back onto the hub. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and press this on. I'm just going to use this other socket here to take up that gap. just gonna go to it get snug you don't want to over pressure it all right and then we're gonna go ahead and let the pressure off I'm gonna check our work mm, I can still see a gap there so I don't think we're all the way down I'm gonna put a little more pressure on it uh, and see if I can't get it to go down a little further all right Let's see if it goes down anymore. All right, now that feels good. I don't want to go any further than that. All right, so we'll go ahead and take that out. Still spins good, so we're good there. Now we're gonna put this bearing assembly back on the spindle. All right, let me make some room here. All right, guys, so we have our spindle here. We have our hub assembly with bearing now. Uh, we wanna take this sensor out here. This is for your wheel sensor for your ABS. I should have taken it out before even starting this job. Um, however, I didn't, but it doesn't look like we damaged it, but we wanna definitely get it out of the way when we put this all back together because we don't wanna risk dam damaging it at this point. So let's just get this out of the way now. Don't want to push my luck on it. So it's just the Allen wrench. Looks like a, a eight millimeter Allen. So we're just gonna use the Allen wrench for that. Get that out of the way and remove this wheel sensor here so we don't damage it. We're gonna just set that off to the side. All right, so I looked it up in these hub mounting bolts are 59 foot pounds. So we adjusted our torque wrench to 59 foot-pounds. We're gonna go ahead and torque these down and start pattern. So I just go right across from the last one I torqued and just go all the way around here. Now I went ahead and pre-torqued these off camera because I forgot to turn my camera on. But essentially that's what you're gonna do. We're gonna torque it down 59 foot-pounds after we do the 59 foot pounds, then we're gonna come back with a quarter turn uh, of each bolt. So I'm not gonna use a degree gauge or anything like that. Uh, I'm just gonna try to get a quarter turn here somehow. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the ground. Cause I think it's gonna take quite a bit of torque All right, quarter turn. Let's do it. All right, yeah, that takes a lot of pressure. Basically, tight as yeah. All right, so that's together. Let's go ahead and put our wheel sensor back in. All right, fam. So we're back at the vehicle. We got our spindle here with our new bearing inside and we're gonna install it on the vehicle. In order to do that, we're gonna first get the lower ball joint right here to seat inside of this uh, cup essentially. So what I wanna do is you see the split here, I'm gonna go ahead and drive 
a chisel right down the middle here in order to split that open. Uh, that way it goes on that ball joint a little easier. So let's go ahead and jump to that now. So I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod and we'll start installing this. Again, first thing we're gonna do is spread this open uh, so that ball joint goes in a little easier. All right, so let me jump to it. Then we're gonna locate our bolt. Once we slid it over the lower ball joint, and we're gonna put our bolt in here to hold it. I'm gonna bring you guys in here so you can see closer what I'm doing. Uh, so we had our chisel here that we used to spread open that uh, lower mount for the ball joint. Uh, and now we're putting the bolts in, which is gonna squeeze it across that ball joint and hold it in place. So we'll go ahead and run that in by hand, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it. Uh, and torque it down. So next thing we want to do here is put in the second lower ball joint. Uh, this here is going to go in this conical seat and then we're going to use a nut here just to suck it down tight. So we're going to go ahead and get that put in and then after that we'll put the uh, CV shaft back inside of the hub and get that splined up and then we'll start hooking up the upper ball joints and it should move along pretty quick at this point so let's go ahead and do that now so you put the nut on the lower ball joint and then you're just going to Tighten it up a little. It's not going to go fully tight because what's happening is the ball joint is actually spinning inside of the uh, seat. So because of that, you'll probably have to put some pressure here on this upper ball joint to get it to uh, stop spinning while you tighten it up. Um, so we'll do that later. Right now, I'm just putting it in place. I'll tighten all these ball joints up once I have the upper ball joints in place. All right, so now that we have the uh, second lower ball joint in place, we're gonna start working on putting this CV shaft back in. So you can see the CV shaft here is gonna go inside of the hub. So we'll get that in now. Got the CV shaft seated in there. Uh, you can see it on this side. Now that we got the CV shaft in, we're gonna go ahead and put the upper ball joints in. There's two of them, one here, one there. Uh, but in order to get them in, we're gonna have to do the same thing we did on the lower ball joint, which is to spread it open here in order to get that ball joint back in its seat. So, all right, let's try it from the bottom. That way I can get more swing on it. All right, so we drive a wedge in there, put the ball joint in, and then we're gonna pull our wedge out and the ball joint should stay in place. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, line it up with the ball joint and push it through. All right. I'm going to use this 
some vice grips here. Right now I'm using just a big pair of welding clamps. So these are vice grips here. And then uh, I got the ball joint seated there. So now I'm just going to pull out my wedge. In this case it's a chisel. And I'll allow that to compress around that ball joint. And then we're going to put in the upper ball joint bolt. So let me go ahead and put that side back in. All right. And then let's tap this through. All right. And then we're going to tighten it up. This here is a 16 millimeter, just like the one on the lower ball joint. So we're just going to run it. Up. Then we're going to put our nut on the other side. So let's go over here, put our nut. All right, let me bring you guys closer here. Now I got the nut in on this side here. The bolt's going through both ball joints on the upper part of the spindle. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Always like to start, start it off by hand just to make sure we're not cross-threading. It feels fairly good. So I'm gonna run it, the rest of it in using my impact and then I'll tighten it with a torque wrench. All right, so we got that upper ball joint in there, both of them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the tie rod together. We'll get that in and then we'll crank on all these bolts to make sure they're good and tight. Uh, the reason why I do them all after they're connected is that way it's held sturdy while I'm cranking on the bolts and putting some torque on it. So let me go ahead and get this last ball joint, or actually this tie rod in, and then we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. Now that we got all our nuts and bolts in place, we're going to go ahead and put a big wrench on them. In the case, I'm going to use a long handle ratchet and we're going to crank them all down good and tight. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right. On this second lower ball joint, uh, we may need to compress it in its seat to keep it from spinning inside of its uh, cup. Okay, so hopefully that stays on. Yep, doesn't look like it gives me much room to work, but see what we can do. Once the nut starts sucking it down, it'll uh, it'll tighten on its own. Once the nut starts, once the nut starts sucking it down, it won't spin anymore. So we can move the clamp at that point and just put some torque on it. All right. So we tighten up the tie rod in. The second lower ball joint, now we'll get that first lower ball joint uh, with this 16 millimeter. I'm just going to use my ratchet here as well. Yeah, I'm going to crank it down pretty tight. Alright, so now we'll get the upper ball joint both of them at the same time because they share the same bolt. Same thing here, crank it down fairly well. You don't want to over tighten it, break it though. So just get it good and tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and start putting together the brakes. 
first we're going to use put our wheel sensor once we got the wheel sensor plugged in we're going to uh, connect this bracket to the back of the spindle that holds the brake line So we have our backing plate here. We're gonna go ahead and put that back on. Leave it goes like that. And there's an alignment bolt here. All right, so now our rotor's in place. We're gonna go ahead and start putting our caliper assembly back together. All right, quick lessons learned here. This axle nut, you may notice I have the old one in here. The reason why I put it is because I noticed that all the CV grease has started to leak out of the center of where the bolt threads are on the CV shaft. So lessons learned, put your old axle nut back in the CV shaft while you're doing this work, at least for as long as you can have it in because your CV lubricant's gonna leak out. All the grease from your CV shaft will start leaking out. Now hopefully I still have enough grease in there. I'm gonna see if I can find some spare CV grease and squeeze it through that axle tube uh, and hopefully get it back into the boot. So let me get back to it. Um, I'll see if I can find some CV grease uh, and then squeeze some through this hole and back into the CV uh, joint itself. Uh, but before I do that, let me go ahead and put this brake caliper assembly back together. Uh, and I'll do that now. As you can see, or may not see, but the pads need to be replaced. I'm not going to do it today. I just want to finish this video and then we'll uh, do the brakes in a future video. Alright, so a side note, uh, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. But while you have the caliper off, this goes for any vehicle, don't step on the brakes because what will happen is you'll push the fluid through the line to the caliper and the pistons will actually pop out of the caliper and ruin the caliper. So again, the caliper is off of the rotor, don't ever step on the brakes and that goes for any vehicle. All right, and just like that, family, we got the wheel bearing put on the Audi Q7. So we're done with this job. At this point, I'm going to end the video, but I want to thank you guys who have watched to the very end. I do truly appreciate that because that helps the algorithm. And if you like what you saw today, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well because we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And until next time, stay good, family. Peace. <laughs>